Hayao Miyazaki, his style of paneling is very basic. It's basic. Hello, my name is Jasmine. I'm an illustrator and welcome to my channel. How do I start this vlog? Basically, what we're going to do in today's video is a full weekend of thumbs. Not phalanges, thumbnails. Ow. Do I need to start thumbnailing chapter 2 of my medieval comic girl night? It would be ideal if we could get all of chapter 2's thumbnails done. I've had this weekly goal all month, so I'm clearly not doing it and I need some type of accountability, aka you, to finally just get 20 pages done. We have three days. Today is Friday. I'm going to focus on this challenge today, Saturday, and Sunday. The only obstacle I have is my day job because I do work Saturday and Sunday. The husband is gonna be away on a backpacking trip, so I will be fully alone for both evenings. So, can we do this? Let's see, and uh, let's start the challenge. It's one o'clock, so I've been at this for about an hour, and then we had lunch. My battery died, so I had to change it. As I've mentioned in other vlogs, the thumbnailing process is very heavy on the brain because you are forcing your mind to visualize text into an actual movie in your head. And not only are you visualizing a movie, you're visualizing multiple angles from that scene. Think of it like a computer, you're using a lot of RAM to be able to process all that information all at once. Thumbnailing takes a lot of mind effort and a lot of time. An hour has passed and I have only done, I've only done the equivalent of one page. Chapter one was 18 pages, so I'm assuming chapter two is gonna be 20, I don't know. But 20 times one hour, that's 20 hours worth of work if I stay fully focused um, just to initially thumbnail. For the sake of speeding up this process, there's a few things that I've been trying to figure out how to do. One is to brain dump on the paper, and that means redrawing the same panel over and over with a slightly different angle quickly. That way I can get as many of those angles that are going on in here, put them on paper, and then eventually decide on which one. I think one of my issues here is that I'm still filtering before I put it down on paper. And I I really, you, you shouldn't do that. You The whole point of this is to write down as many angles as you want to later pick the one that you think is best. So how does that look visually on the sketch paper. What I am thinking is instead of trying to thumbnail multiple pages in one notebook page, do one single comic page per uh, sketchbook page. That way I allow myself plenty of room in the sketchbook to try out as many angles as quickly as possible and not be bogged down by perfectionism because I think that's the main villain in this process. The other thing that I'm doing to alleviate this time-sucking activity is using color coding. I didn't do that in the previous thumbnails, but now I'm realizing that if I thumbnail something now, in two weeks, I will have no idea what any of these scribbles mean. I started labeling what each panel was saying, but even then it was hard to figure out what the heck I drew here. So I'm also starting to color code with highlighters uh, what the main elements are because panel to panel some of these elements are repeating if I can pinpoint and label by color That this object is now zoomed in or this object is in the background I think that'll help me recall what I drew faster It looks like I still got page four and half of page three to thumbnail but after these two pages We're gonna take up a whole page for paneling I just went to the Nespresso store yesterday and got these uh, new limited edition Paris coffee pods. I don't know what it tastes like, so we're gonna try it. Okay. 
Here you go. Look at the nice. monkey. Jonathan is gone. It is 7.45 p.m. I don't have too much time left because I got day job to do tomorrow, which means I have to wake up at 5.30 in the morning. Therefore, that is a 9 p.m. sharp bedtime. So I have an hour and 15 minutes to shower, do my nails, walk huck, and feed them and feed myself. So I guess this means good night. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, before I forget, today's tally of uh, pages done, seven pages. As far as the script goes, it's it looks like I'm over halfway done with chapter two, believe it or not. The way I divided these chapters uh, is strictly by the story on the script. It's not by page numbers or anything. So some chapters might be a lot shorter than others. It seems like I'm, I haven't quite decided if if chapter two is only like 10 pages, then we'll probably have to combine them with other chapters. I don't know yet. I'm still figuring things out, but it's starting to look like chapter two will be like 15 pages or less. Hello. It's Saturday. I just came back from day job. I had my lunch and we're ready to rock and roll. We should continue to thumbnail chapter two and see if we can finish it today. where I need to show the castle of the main land of Beaujeu. I haven't been able to find information of where the Lord of Beaujeu resided in the early 1400s. I googled Beaujeu again because I do have to draw the castle right now. I haven't googled Beaujeu in months. I'm slowly winding down from the research and uh, the writings. Funny enough, they changed the damn article. They changed information. The town of Beaujeu was the capital of the estate of Beaujeu all the way into the 1500s, according to the original Wikipedia post. And now it's saying that it actually got transferred to villefranche sur saone I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but it transferred to that in the 1300s. Almost a 100 to 200 year difference. That changes things in my story now. The character in this scene is no longer going to the town of Beaujeu to speak with the current lord of Beaujeu because that's not technically where he would be residing. Ah, uh, thank goodness I re-googled that because it would have been horribly wrong unless they change it back again. So now I'm back to square one to figure out what was the main castle in Villefranche and see if uh, there is a reference photo I can pick from. Obviously, we can make things up. I can make up a medieval castle to be the residence of the Lord of Beaujeu, but I would rather just try to find what the original castle looked like, just to give this story the flavor of history that it deserves. All it takes is just a couple of searches and it can elevate the story. That's what I'm doing right now. Apparently it's Villefranche. I knew that the transfer had occurred, it's just now we're moving it to my time period, so I guess now we're going to Villefranche. <sighs> Does this change anything? Honestly, it doesn't change anything. I think there are only a few scenes with the actual Lord of Beaujeu, so 
it shouldn't be that much of a big deal I think I just need to like emotionally be okay with this change <laughs> so we pretty much never go to Beaujeu in the story I thought that was fishy too like how can this very important town not have very important landmarks I should have followed my hunch and re-looked into that Anyways, I just wanted to share how dramatic doing historical research for a story can feel sometimes where I just things can change and you have to work around that if you want to, of course. At the end of the day, this is art. You can choose to include whatever you want, but it can be a roller coaster sometimes. So I haven't found what the main castle from Villefranche was, but I did Google a few other words that I hadn't Googled yet, including the words of Beaujeu, castles and stuff, and I found this random page, okay? This is research for you. The castle isn't too far from Villefranche, so that is a very good sign, and it looks medieval enough. So perhaps we found our winner. Like, that is a very medieval fireplace and I mean like I said it's literally going to take up just two panels in the entire comic so we don't have to worry too much about it and I think uh, I think we're good I found another web page connecting that castle with the Lords of Beaujeu all the way into uh, 1331 the third wife of Guichard of Beaujeu now, we don't have a confirmation that the Lords of Beaujeu lived here in the year 1400 or 1415, but that's fine. At least we have a pretty good connection, so we're going to stick to this castle. and I've been working on this for two hours and 45 minutes. What's been our progress? Three and a half pages in almost three hours. So I'm starting to see that one page equals one hour to thumbnail. That speed is a lot better than when I was working on chapter one. So I'm definitely improving on my thumbnailing. I think it very much is like a muscle where it needs to kind of wake up and get back into into gear. Where we are in chapter two, there is a heated conversation that includes some political stuff. So I do have to make sure that the way that they're talking flows well with the paneling. And that is affected by how many word bubbles to put in each panel. So the more word bubbles, the more real estate it takes up. And the more real estate means more time. And that is flow, basically. I am not claiming that I'm doing this right, but I am definitely aware of it and I am doing my best to take what I wrote in the script and convey it as accurately and still dramatically as possible. I don't think I'll be able to finish tonight because I still want to go for a run and I wanted to read more of this. I had started reading it and I went almost halfway done with it and then I told myself you know what I'm gonna t pause on this focus on writing as a craft and then once I have to go into thumbnails and comics I should jump back in and try to finish this classic and now that I'm doing thumbnails and here we are in our weekend thumbnail challenge I figured it would be appropriate as an evening reading to get back onto this I'm going to pause it's been three hours and I don't want to be kind of creating bad paneling so I, I feel like there's got to be some wisdom that I can apply to what I'm working on right now so it's 5 30 I'm gonna read some of this then go for a run do some chores and then get back to reading This is pretty cool. Back from my run. It is 
and I've been reading. I got to an interesting part that touches upon panels and the types of panels that exist. It's really cool to see this kind of data compiled. I, I don't see this anywhere else to be honest. Here it's talking about the different categories of panels. You have the, for example, the word specific, which condensed in an explanation, it's an image that goes with the narration. But this book is really cool and I, I don't I haven't taken a class in sequential art, so I to me my personal experience with learning about sequential art has all been by myself. Like what resources I've been able to find either on the internet or through books and there's not a lot of resources, at least for me outside of school. And this book has been the most comprehensive resource breaking down a lot of stuff about comics that I kind of wish I had read a long time ago when I was really young because um, a lot of this I it's really weird it's like I already know about these categories but I know them intuitively not I, I didn't know that they had names or like what exactly is going on with each one like I can't if you were to ask me right now uh, to list the types of panels that exist, yeah, I would not be able to list them at all. My brain would go blank. And yet when I sit down to thumbnail a scene, I am thinking like this. Like, does this need to be narrated? Will the dialogue sort of describe what the action is happening or will the action kind of not need the dialogue? Since I'm reading a lot of Nausicaa for reference, Hayao likes to match dialogue with the action. If you had taken that dialogue out and just used the picture, you could deduce that somebody is falling, but the dialogue helps the reader really get it. There is kind of like an overemphasis of action through the dialogue that I'm not I'm not personally a huge fan of because it, it feels, it pulls you out of the story. Like, who is screaming out sort of narration things out loud? Like, no one really goes, oh, she fell. It's not natural. There is a sense of just cartooniness to it. And that's, oh, that's a style. That's a vibe. I am noticing those things about Hayao's uh, manga. And it's cool to connect it to this, that he does use some of the, some of the duo specific, I guess, types of paneling where the dialogue matches the action like to the T. Scott McCloud very correctly emphasizes that you have to have a good story in order for the comic to be good. Like, yes, very important. Any, any chance I have to try to improve by reading things like this is important. It's really important. So I just wanted to share that. I'm really excited about this book. It's getting good. My face is shiny. It's just lotion. I found a passage that literally is saying what I just said two seconds ago. There's no set rule for when and how to use a given type of word picture combination, which is the categories that we just went through. Most cartoonists just rely on their instincts and don't get hung up on anyone's nerdy categories. Play around, see what works for you, and build your own instincts through practice. Hello. It's Sunday. I just got back from day job and had lunch, and we're back to the thumbnailing. I hope you can't hear the neighbors upstairs, but I guess they're playing really loud music. I am very tired from day job, but it is 4.40. Jonathan is still not here. In fact, he hasn't even texted me, so I'm assuming he's still hiking. Since I finished that Making Comics books last night, I have been thinking a little bit more about my comic making process. And honestly, the only thing that I think I would like to change is the style of my panels. Hayao Miyazaki, his style of paneling, it's very basic. It's basic. Not a single panel is open, at least not... Okay, I, maybe, I shouldn't say not a single, because like you could probably find one panel that's borderless. But most of his panels have borders, and 
hardly any like special effects like the kind that you would see at a in a shoujo manga and not that many speed lines his style is pretty like basic i don't mean basic to feel or sound as a criticism not at all uh, i think he is still thinking like a director in in cinema when he's paneling these things in fact i i get more mobius vibes than than um Japanese manga. There are some panels in my own comic so far where I would like to break out of his style and I think there are already several panels that I have thumbnailed and not just in chapter 2 but a lot more in chapter 1 that I think are questionable but I have no space to judge it yet. Like I can tell that it's off but I haven't been able to say exactly why it's off so i have a lot of room for improvement and it's gonna take time for me to be able to really for me to be able to make those Im improvements but that's not going to stop me from continuing to make this comic it's just it is what it is and that is just the nature of creating art it, it'll never be perfect y you have to accept some level of perf of imperfections and mistakes and all that. I just hope that readers can read through these blemishes and and still want to invest themselves into the story. So that is my hope. That is what I I hope to achieve. Uh, it's not perfectionism, it's it's their attention. I'm debating on getting coffee, but it is five o'clock, so that's a dangerous territory here. And so there we have it, we're done! It is exactly 10 o'clock at night and chapter 2 is exactly 14 pages. Man, finish that right in the nick of time. I'm glad I didn't mess up my deadline. If you'd like to see these thumbnails more in detail, you're welcome to check out my Patreon. I will be uploading all 14 pages in their thumbnail version on there. I'll also be sharing some script sneak peeks of Girl Night. If you have enjoyed watching my progress, please give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel if you'd like to see more of these types of art vlogs. I'm gonna go wash my face, put some PJs on. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!